Hi, my name is Georgia. I know Big Match Studios from university where we had some common modules while studying. I have a degree in economics, international and international development, and a master in international tourism development. Um, my work experience is starting with a student mentor, associate lecturer in subjects of economic, tourism and sociology. And at the moment, I'm an academic practice tutor for a university delivering academic skill sessions. In this channel, I will be sharing economic concepts, debates and forecasts with you. And today we will analyze the UK debt as we can see on the screen. From a very interesting article on BBC, it describes the difference between the deficit and debt. So deficit is the amount of money that government overspends each year, so more than the budgeted amount. Deficit is covered through borrowings and selling assets. In case government actually spends less uh, than it gets as in income or spends less than budgeted, then it uh, is known as surplus. Uh, deficit and debt are linked. So debt is the total amount owned by the government over years. And it rises when there is deficit, but falls when there is surplus. Um, so what is national debt? Um, national debt refers to all the debts owned by country's government. Um, it comes from bonds, securities, and it can come from uh, borrowing from international, uh, from international institutions such as IMF or World Bank. Uh, just to explain a bit better, a bond is like a guarantee right of payment and very low interest investment right. National debt can be issued by different levels of government, so from local such as council to national, so country level. There are different term lengths, most uh, times being yield over 10 years. Repayment usually comes from tax, the income tax, so uh, tax on the salary that we are getting, business tax and VAT. Debt could be held by national government and citizens in local currency, so in British pound, but it also can be owned by foreigners and represented in that country's currency. National debt can be issued in forms of uh, bonds and loans. Bonds are issued by central banks, in this case Bank of England, in local currency, and government borrows that money. The central bank auctions that bonds to public through selected financial institutions, such as British guilds in the UK, US Treasury bills in the US, and uh, Japanese government bonds in Japan. Loans, on the other hand, are funds raised from commercial and private banks. Going back to our article from BBC, we can see that in March 2022, the debt in the UK was £2.34 trillion. And that's 96.2% of GDP, and it comes from own borrowings. The debt is measured as percentage to GDP, which stands for gross domestic product, and GDP represents the amount of money governed through goods and services manufactured and delivered domestically. Economically, it is the sum of investment uh, in the country, government spending, consumption, and net export. Net, uh, net export itself represents the amount of exports minus import. The debt is mainly represented through treasury bills and bonds from pension schemes or in form of pension schemes and is managed by DMO, which stands for Debt Management Office. Looking on the ONS website, we can see how UK stands uh, in comparison with other countries. So in comparison with the EU countries, average debt is 90.9% as per June 2021, yeah? And in the United Kingdom, we can see that it's slightly over it, 103.2%. There is an increase of 19.4% 
from December 2019, which makes um, it as one of the highest debt increase in Europe, as we can see. Average in UK in the European Union is 13.7%. However, if we compare it to G7 countries, G7 countries are US, China, Japan, Germany, France, Canada, and Italy. UK debt is below, where for G7, the average is 140.2%. A very interesting um, report from Jubilee Debt Campaign describes how debt in the UK is formed, where it comes from. So two-fifths of government um, debt is owned by the UK government itself, and as we explained earlier, it is owned or the debt, the money were given by the Bank of England, which is a UK institution. The UK government's extra spending during COVID crisis had, uh, has been paid by borrowing from itself through the Bank of England. Again, around 430 billion. Over four fifths of UK government debt is owned to people and institutions in the UK. Institutions, Bank of England, people, people that are retired because some of the debt comes from the pension schemes. The UK government is paying the lowest amount of interest on its debt um, in recorded history as proportion of GDP. And this links to point four, that the government can currently borrow at the cheapest interest rate in history which is about 0.7%. And this makes uh, the debt compared to GDP one of the lowest amounts. Uh, UK government tax revenue as proportion to GDP is the third lowest of G7 countries and well behind of European countries. And that is linked to aging population in the UK. And it's actually um, forecasted to decrease uh, at the moment is 39 and it's forecasted to decrease at 23% uh, in about 15 years. The, U the debt of the UK private sector is two, three times bigger than of the governments. And this is linking to number three, where uh, the debt comes from internal loans, um, so private banks and population itself households, uh, pensioners. The UK economy has the second largest deficit in the rest, with the rest of the world of any uh, rich country. So UK at the moment um, has around, the deficit is about 3% and the only country that's, that has a higher deficit is Greece. And we know that the national debt of Greece is also much higher than the UK one. And last important point is that UK financial sector is most exposed to a crisis of any G7 economy. That's because UK as percentage of GDP has um, assets and liabilities owned by external economies. And if there is an economic shock, UK will be very volatile in that situation. Looking at some of uh, the history of the UK debt, there was a slight stability um, of the public sector debt as percentage of GDP, where it fell to about 29%, as we can see in here, uh, in, at, the end of, at the beginning of 90s. Uh, in the period 2002 up to 2007, national debt increased to 33, 35, later on 39% of GDP. And this increase in debt level occurred despite the long period of economic expansion. So we know that this was a period of boom. It was primarily due to the government's decision to increase spending on health and education. And also there was a rise in social security spending. Between 2008 to 2015, uh, public debt increased sharply. Between 2008 specific, specifically to 2014, recession took place 
so lower tax receipts, higher spending, unemployment benefits. This recession particularly hit stamp duty, so falling house prices. It hit the income tax and lower corporation tax. Uh, it caused an underlying structural deficit. So as we explained better, spending greater than tax. At the same time, took place the financial bailout uh, of the banks such as uh, North Rock, Royal, uh, Royal Bank of Scotland, Lloyds and other banks. From 2011 to 2015 uh, 16, the pace of increasing the public sector debt has slowed due to the government attempts to reduce the budget deficit. The government has announced strictly, like strict spend limit, spending limits, and that's why between 16, 2016 and 19, um, the net debt as percentage of GDP was uh, stabilized due to restraint on government spending. Uh, the government actually hoped uh, debt as percentage of GDP would fall faster, but economic growth has been less than expected, because as we know in 2020, COVID came, and that's why the national debt increased slightly. Um, now, if we ask how debt occurs, Government borrows money when it spends more than it gets in income. And income comes from tax, VAT, student loans. Debt occurs when government requires more money to be spent on a particular side of the economy. Let's say manufacturing for export defense, health in cases such as we have COVID, social spending through furlough schemes, education. The government could increase tax to increase their revenue and reduce borrowing. However, it is not always the answer, uh, as people might have less disposable income. The increase in tax and spending should have a balance that leads to economic growth, social stability, job creation. Increasing tax could also cause certain companies and, individu and individuals to leave, but um, more importantly, as we mentioned before, it leads to less disposable income. This will lead to people spending less money on goods and services, which will favor hamper growth, as economists need people to invest, but also spend on things they may or may not, not need. So how to repay the national debt? National debt is repaid through interest rate. In uh, January, the interest rate was 6.1 billion, so this article is from February, that's why I'm saying January. Um, the repayments are set and they follow the retail price index that was 7.8% in January. It also can uh, reflect the inflation rate. With a reopening economy in January, the economy recorded a 2.9 uh, billion surplus. Uh, Mr. Sir Johnson actually highlighted for BBC that we are still spending a lot of money, we are poorer than ever, but positively is that the gap between spending and tax receipts is decreasing. Um, if we look at some further approach that regarding national debt in the UK, uh, Bloomberg has a very good article as well. All of the websites I am using, will you'll be able to find in the description of this video as well. Inflation at the moment is approximately 9% and it's actually uh, forecasted to increase in this quarter and next quarter. One percentage point increase adds 5 billion to debt costs and that's a very important and interesting detail. This raises the cost of financial uh, government bonds acquired by the central bank. That's why the Debt Management Office, DMO, plans to sell 131.5 billion of guilds, of bonds. Uh, UK national debt is assumed to be uh, paid in short term. However, compared to household debt, a country can extend the repayment using different tools. The government rolls the debt by taking new loans to repay the previous ones. Um, 
a country might not implement tax increase and decrease government spending if the income that comes uh, that the country makes is higher than the interest paid for the debt. In this way, the country has economic growth as well while repaying the debt. In case of the UK, Bank of England has a very interesting technique. They can conduct quantitative easing. Quantitative easing, or QE, uh, is a monetary policy strategy used by central banks. With QE, uh, central bank purchases securities in attempt to reduce interest rates, increase the supply of money and drive more lending to consumers and businesses. So to give more money as loan to people and businesses. The goal is to stimulate economic activity during financial crisis and keep credit uh, flowing. In the UK, quantitative easing, uh, no, sorry, in the UK, through quantitative easing, the central banks buy bonds, putting more money in the economy. And in this case, people being able to take loans, uh, consumption will increase and the interest rate for the debt will decrease as well. One interesting question is what happens if a country does not return the debt? Uh, when countries do not return the debt, they will default on it. Uh, most countries actually defaulted once in their lifetime, uh, but that's not common knowledge for uh, the citizens and um, for investors. Some examples of defaults were in Mexico, uh, when the country defaulted on its debt following the peso crisis in 1994. A 15% devolution in peso towards the US dollar, as we can see in here, um, caused for investors to rapidly withdraw capital and sell their shares. Some uh, A more recent example would be uh, Argentina, which defaulted on its debt in 2001 on $132 billion in loans. This amount represented actually one-seventh of all the money borrowed by third world countries at that time. In the UK, if the government does not repay the debt, then a default would come and the currency will devalue. The country will uh, borrow from IMF and will introduce austerity. There might be the possibility to lend from other countries to bail out the debt. However, if the pound is devalued, then it would push up the cost for imports, which uh, the UK is heavily reliant on, specifically for f things like food. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share and subscribe. Support the channel and uh, on Patreon if you can, and you'll get early access uh, to the economic series I'm doing. Each video should come out uh, for the first day of the month, unless you have an early access. And I'll catch with you, uh, I'll catch up with you next time.